going to be making a movie for the first time in uh, 19 and a half, technically 20 years. It's going to be a masterpiece. It's going to be on par with, uh, with my older stuff. Um, well, my first film was an indie. Who, am I talking to you or the camera? Which do you want me to talk to? My, uh, my first film, uh, which I did as a graduate thesis film, and it won me my first Academy Award when I was 19 years old, was a, uh, a sprawling Canadian epic called Winnipeg. Uh, it starred uh, an actor not a lot of many people know here in America. His name was uh, Alfred Dupont, and uh, he's an amazing uh, he's an amazing French actor. And uh, he also won an Academy Award for that role uh, as the part of Henri. And uh, Winnipeg basically exposes the tragic corruption surrounding the Canadian Mounties and the uprising of 1878. Well, my my first action movie didn't have a lot of plot. In fact, uh, the basic pitch that I gave to the studio was. It's big budget action crap. Those are the words I used. I looked right in the producer's eyes and I said, it's big budget action crap. Now imagine, if you will, an opening shot. Glancing over the city of New York, you see a man running down the street. He goes into a church for, for confession. And uh, he says to the priest, forgive me, for, Father, for I have sinned. And you hear guns cock and you hear the, the father say, Forgive me because I'm about to sin. And the guy starts shooting. And the hero, he goes running down the street and every building down the entire street blows up. All in succession. All in succession for two and a half hours. It was a fucking masterpiece. The critics didn't get it though. I don't know if you'd call it an experience. Uh, back when I was kind of like going through my drug phase... I was out of uh, favor with a lot of the Hollywood cats, and uh, I kind of played around a little bit with the adult industry. Uh, the first picture I made was called The uh, the Blooming of Harry Call. It was a tribute to The Conversation, um, unknown 72 film uh, by Francis Ford Coppola. He directed it in between Godfather 1 and 2, and uh, again, not a lot of the critics got it, but... Uh, my God. Yeah, my, my films, uh, they define a lot of people's expectations. You see, one of the things that they told me you have to do when you're making an adult film is that you shoot in succession. You do uh, Missionary, you do, uh, you do Cowgirl, you do Reverse Cowgirl, and then you do Blowjob with a cum shot finish. I threw all that out the window. I imagined it, it was a little bit like a Christopher Nolan movie where everything was out of sequence. So the film begins with a reverse cum shot with the jism filing off of the woman's face and back into the man's penis, which represents a uh, man's need to kind of crawl back into the womb and to get back into a protective place. And from that, all of the fucking goes backwards until you figure out how they met. See, a lot of times you don't get that in a porn. The guy shows up with a pizza. Hey, I'm here to deliver a pizza. And they go, is that a sausage in your pocket? Are you happy to see me? You don't get the opening of that film, you have no idea what's going on until the very, very end of the film. Again, critics didn't like it. AVN gave it two stars. I think uh, X fans gave it a half star. The guy said he couldn't beat off to it. What do I need you to beat off to it for? I make art. It was a hit. And I fucking hated it. God, I hated that movie. The Wandering Jew. Who would have thought? All right, in, uh, in Christian uh, mythology or in Christian history or whatever, one of the soldiers who beat Christ uh, basically was cursed by Christ to walk the earth until he comes again. Excellent setup for a sci-fi movie, or so I thought. The actor that I got had blonde hair and blue eyes. We're trying to pass this guy off as Jewish. Didn't work at all. Worst actor you've ever seen. He made Troy Donovan look like Troy McClure. He was, he was the worst fucking thing I've ever seen in a movie. I would make a suggestion to this guy. I would tell him, all right, we're going to play this as if your pants are on fire and you really need to pee. And he'd come in and he'd give me, you know, some fucking Gilligan's Island bullshit that didn't have anything to do with the movie. Consequently, I disowned the movie. I put the name Alan Smithy on the movie. Not a lot of people know this. I am the Alan Smithy who directed The Wandering Jew. I hated it. I fucking hated it. But I met my first wife. So I guess that was worth it. Uh, she was one of the actresses in the movie. She had the acting ability of wet pancake mix. Uh, 
which is to say that you could pour her into a mold and she'd come out looking exactly the way you wanted her to. But other than that, she was just wet pancake mix. She was a fucking dull, lifeless broad. We were married for 10 years. She could give head. But uh, as far as being a good human being, I don't know. She ran off and joined Greenpeace. She was lost at sea. Details are foggy. Can we change the subject? Uh, we just want to know. Like, we don't even know what the plot is. So... I... I don't know. I have a... I signed an NDA with the studio, so I can't really talk about what the plot is going to be. It's going to have the, the pathos of Sophie's Choice, uh, with the star-studded sci-fi action of Star Wars. Um, there's going to be romance, lovemaking, hate. Uh, I want it to be Lawrence of Arabia meets A Night in Casablanca. Uh, I can say this, that my, my, my family, my old family hails from Latveria, which is a very... Uh, most people can't even find it on a map. Uh, part of it's going to be shot there uh, partially because uh, of the great tax benefits that we're going to get. Partially. My favorite Punisher? Dolph Lundgren. Just throwing it out there. you got to take sides in life. My father always told me, you pick a side or you end up falling on your backside. I choose Dolph Lundgren. I choose Dolph because uh, I'm not allowed uh, within 500 miles in the United States for the most part. They don't know I'm here right now. But uh, we're going to shoot Latveri because I think it's got a, it's got a tremendous backdrop of social upheaval. Uh, imagine Sicily as if someone took a shit on it and then bombed it. And that's what Latveri looks like. It's, uh, it's magnificent. Uh, I think the visuals we're going to get, we're going to win an Oscar for the cinematography. I have a vision for this movie. It's going to blow your socks off. I want to tell you something about my childhood that I've never told anyone before. My uncle used to creep, creep, creep into my room and he would hold my head down and he would say to me, Johnny, Johnny, he would say, don't tell anyone what I'm about to do. No, he didn't rape me. He used to tell me terrible made-up stories about Bazooka Joe! I hated that comic book. I love the gum, but god damn were those tiny comics hard to read. But he would sit there and tell me about epic programs. Bazooka, Bazooka Joe meets Popeye and Bazooka Joe and Mandrake the Magician. I despised my uncle, but he would hold my head down and he would make me hear them. He would subject me to these stories. That's how I became a psychologist. <laughs>